Hi, One Hour Smart Home here, and today we're going to show you how to use your Ecobee Smart Thermostat Premium or the manual for your Ecobee Thermostat Premium. This model was launched in 2022, and what's unique about this Ecobee Thermostat model is that it has a built-in air quality sensor and it has ALEXA built in, meaning that you can give it voice commands and it will work with ALEXA devices, as well as it has a small speaker and microphone built in so that it can work with ALEXA and as an ALEXA device. We're gonna show you how to use it on the thermostat first, and then we'll show you how to use it on the phone. The front of the device is a touch screen. And what it shows on this device in the large numbers is our current temperature inside of our home. So it's 75 degrees. Down below that, it says 78 degrees. And that's the temperature set point for our air conditioning, meaning my air conditioning will kick on at 78 degrees and it will maintain that temperature. And I know it's air conditioning because it's in a blue font and logo around it. If it were red, orangish color, that means it is heating but we've got it set to air conditioning currently and the air conditioning will turn on at 78 and inside my house it's 75. Up above that, we've got a humidity symbol, which is this water droplet. It tells us our current humidity, which is 56%. Now over here, it says our air is clean. That's what that means because this does have that built-in air quality monitor and it does have a built-in humidistat. Now what's neat about the air quality monitor is I can click on clean right here and then it will tell me more about my indoor air quality. You can see right here on the graph that it shows it's fairly clean, but it could be poor quality if you've got more volatile organic compounds or carbon dioxide. Here it says our volatile organic compounds are low and our carbon dioxide is moderate. That's probably because I'm talking right into the device and I've got the door shut in this room, but it tells you about your estimated pollutant levels. Now it does say that it's currently calibrating the sensor for the home because I've only had this installed for a few days, but once you've had it installed longer, it won't have that calibrating sensor anymore after it gets about a month of data. We're going to X out of this and go back to the home screen. To change the temperature of the device, we touch right in the center and then we can scroll with our finger up or down to set that temperature. We can also use the provided plus symbol or the minus symbol to adjust the temperature as well. So let's adjust it down to a temperature that will trigger our air conditioning system. We're gonna put it at 68 and you can see it says 68 until 1130 and then it highlights in this blue around the device, meaning that our air conditioner has just turned on and been triggered. So our air conditioner will run until it gets to 68 degrees. So it's gonna take quite a while to do that. Now, the same thing is true if you wanted to heat your home, but let's say we wanna change from heating to cooling. How do we do that? We go up here and click on the snowflake and the snowflake has different settings here. So we can go to heat, we can go to auto, or we can go to off and completely turn off the thermostat so that it's not controlling anything. But I'm gonna click on heat right there and you can see this symbol change to heat as well as this text and outline change to a orange reddish color. So that means that we're on heat and now I can just go in here and adjust this just like I did for cooling. But we're gonna go back here and then we're gonna go in one last setting, the auto setting. And the auto setting allows us to set a temperature set point for both heating and cooling. So at 67, my heat would turn on and at 72, my air conditioning would turn on. So if I click in here, I can adjust the cooling set point and the heat set point on each individual item. And I can do that by once again scrolling, so just like this, or I can click right here and it's going to let me adjust those. So we'll leave that one at 74, and then we're gonna click there again because we wanna adjust this. So now I could click on my heat set point, and if I wanna lower that, 
I can do that. So you can click on either your cooling set point or your heating set point and then make those adjustments. So if you wanna leave it in auto mode, you'll have a range for heating and cooling. Now there is a limitation for that range. It won't let you have it right at like 73 for heating and 74 for cooling. It's gotta be a couple degrees different because it doesn't want your heating and cooling turning on all the time. So you're gonna go back here and we're just gonna set it to air conditioning or cooling right here. And we've got our snowflake and that means we're going to be cooling the house to whatever our temperature set point is. So if I click over here, it also gives me the weather. So it says right now it is 71 degrees and uh, the evening is going to be 70 overnight, 68 and 66 tomorrow morning. If I click here, it'll give me my four day forecast and what's going to happen, as well as you can see the chance of precipitation down here. So tomorrow it looks like it's going to be a clear day, but Friday, Saturday and Sunday on the weekend, it's going to be a bummer. It looks like we're going to get some rain. So it also tells you the humidity in there. It says it would be 79% today. So let's click in here again and go through some more of the settings. Now I can click up here on the menu button and I've got a couple different options here. I can do exactly what I did before and I can change this system mode to cool, heat or auto. So we're gonna leave it at cool. But what's different is I have these comfort settings here. And in a comfort setting, you have home, away, and sleep. And that is what the Ecobee thermostat uses to schedule and create temperature set points. So the theory behind it is at home, you would have, let's say, a comfortable temperature like 70 degrees. And when you're away, if it's summertime, you would wanna maybe have that at a higher temperature set point to save you energy at, let's say, 75 degrees. And then when you sleep, you may like it a little bit cooler. So you would have your sleep set point at 68 or 67 degrees. Now, if I just wanted to quickly change it to whatever my temperature set point is, I could click it to home or I could go over here if I wanted to save some more energy and I could click it to away, or maybe I'm gonna take a nap and I could click it to sleep. We're gonna show you where you can adjust these in the thermostat a little bit later. But for now, that's just an overview of what the difference is between home, away, and sleep. They're just different comfort settings. And the home is designed for comfort, away is designed to save energy, and sleep is designed for comfort while sleeping. Now let's click down here and this is just that air quality screen that we clicked on before and it just shows that our VOCs and carbon dioxide are a little bit up because I've probably been talking right into it from a foot or two away. It's a fairly sensitive sensor. Now I can click over to the next one and that is our fan mode. So currently I've got the fan mode set to auto, which means whenever heating or cooling is triggered, the fan will automatically turn on. But let's say I just wanted to circulate air in the house. I can click this over to on and it will circulate air and it will run indefinitely. But if I wanted to change it so it only runs for let's say 15 minutes or 45 minutes or a couple hours, I could do so right here and I could just click let's say one hour and then it would turn off in an hour and the fan would run independent of any heating or cooling that I have going on. And that's just so if you wanted to circulate air throughout your home. Now, if you click back over to auto, you can also have your fan automatically circulate air, let's say every five minutes per hour. So five minutes out of 60, it would run the fan. And that's really good for, let's say, if you've got uneven heating or cooling in your home, circulating that air, even while your heating and cooling isn't on, will help make it more even. So you could do anywhere from 25 minutes all the way up to 55 minutes an hour of fan runtime. I'm just gonna leave this uh, completely off right now because today we're gonna have the windows open so there's no reason for me to really circulate air. But in the wintertime or summertime, if you wanna have more even heating and cooling, it's a great option to be able to run that fan a certain number of minutes per hour. Now, if I click over here, it shows us our voice assistant setup. So I can link both Siri and Alexa to this device, which means I can link HomeKit to the Ecobee Smart Thermostat Premium or Alexa, which means that you can use voice command to control it through your Siri or iPhone or other compatible device like a HomePod 
or you can use other ALEXA devices like an Echo Dot or an Echo Show to control this with voice commands. Now, what's unique about this is because it does have ALEXA built in, you can just use the voice command right here on the device without the need for another device like an Echo Dot. It'll work with Echo Dots if you've got them or Echo Shows or any other ALEXA device, but you don't need them to use the voice assistant with this device. Now let's click over here to the settings menu. Now here in system, it says our HVAC mode is set to cool. And this is kind of redundant because this is just that heat, cool, or auto again. So you can get to the screen a couple different ways. And then I could also change the fan. But some things you haven't seen are down here. If we click on this, this is the Eco Plus. That is currently enabled. Smart Home in a way is currently enabled. And our savings press and show up. So let's click on Eco Plus. And what Eco Plus does and why I've got it enabled is that it's designed to help us save energy by looking at our usage patterns and automatically turning down our HVAC system when we leave automatically. And that's also part of that smart home and away. The smart home and away means that it's gonna detect when you're not home and it will automatically turn that down. And it works in conjunction with Eco Plus to create like an automatic schedule or savings or an energy savings for you based on your savings preference, which is down here. So you can go in the savings preference and you've got your maximum, enhanced, moderate, and basic. And what this is going to do is it's gonna use an algorithm to help you save more energy and money the higher that you've got this turned up. So if I were to click on this to maximum, it means that it's gonna try and cut down my energy use as much as possible. It means that it might get a little bit hotter or a little bit too cool maybe in the winter, but what it's doing is using an algorithm to try and figure out when I'm away from my house, what temperatures I like, and really adjust the thermostat to save you the most amount of energy. If you click down to basic, it's gonna save you the least amount of energy, but prioritize comfort more. So let's put it up to maximum right now, and we'll click back, but it says maximum from one to 20% additional savings in your energy costs. So we'll leave that up there and go back and go down to the next one. Let's click on sensors. Here it shows my Ecobee thermostat as my only sensor, but this does work with room and temperature sensors that can detect the temperature in a room as well as motion in a room. And those are designed to help you save energy as well as let you know what the temperature is in other rooms to kind of balance out the temperature within your home as well as try and save energy or comfort. So you can add those here and then look and see what the temperature settings are for those particular devices if you've got them throughout your house. Now let's click back and we can look at the next thing here which is schedule. Here you can see we've got a full week of schedule, including the weekends, and you can change across the top here to whatever date you want by clicking on the touch screen. So I've got a sleep set point, a home set point, and a sleep set point on Monday. So my sleep, it's going to be uh, from 11.30 p.m. until 6.30 a.m. It's going to be 65 degrees heating, or 82 degrees cooling. That's pretty hot, but I can go in here and adjust that for any day. And I could go to Tuesday and see what it's at. And I can click in here and then I can change that uh, time. So let's say that I wanted my sleep time to start at 9.30. I can click that and then now you can see it'll be sleep from 9 p.m. to 6.30 a.m. Now let's click up in the top and I wanna add an away set point. So I click on away and then I click next. Now I'm gonna put this uh, at let's say eight o'clock or nine o'clock. So let's click save. And what that does is add a different temperature set point. So it's going through as if you had a day where uh, you go to sleep at 9.30 the night before. The next day you wake up at 6.30 a.m. and adjust to that temperature set point. And then it adjusts again when you're away from your home to your office or work. And then it's gonna stay at that temperature set point until your sleep. But I wanna adjust this again and add an away set point um, or a home set point. So it would mimic when I get home from work. We'll put this one at like 5 p.m. 
and then you're gonna have temperature set points exactly how you may want for a typical day. So it gets a little bit warmer when you wake up at 6 a.m. And then when you're away, it's gonna save you a little bit more energy. And then when you get back again, it's at a more comfortable temperature. And then when you go to sleep, it's at whatever comfortable temperature you want for that. And you could go through and change that for each day. But you may wonder, how do I adjust the home away and sleep temperature set points? Well, that's the next item here. That's those comfort settings. So here I can set my home temperature and I can set my away temperature and my sleep temperature. So for home, I would like it probably a little bit cooler than this. So we'll put this one down to let's say 72 and then just let that set. We'll click X here. And now uh, it's gonna be between 69 and 72 with the fan auto on. That sounds good for home. Now I like to sleep a little bit cooler, so let's make sure we put our heat way down. We'll put that at like 60 degrees, and then I'm gonna X out of that, and then we're gonna put our air conditioning, 82 is way, way too hot to sleep at. We're gonna put that down to like 68 and click X. So I'm gonna save that for my sleep temperature and then my away temperature. I wanna save a lot of energy when I'm away, so I'm gonna set this really low uh, my heat temperature, we're gonna set that down to like 55, just enough to keep the pipes from freezing potentially. And then uh, I'm also gonna set this temperature up high, like 86 degrees, my away temperature. Now, if you've got pets or somebody that's gonna be at home that can't change the thermostat, you wouldn't wanna change this away setting too high that it could be harmful to them. So just keep that in mind. We're gonna click save, but that is where you edit those comfort savings. And then if I were to go back to my schedule now, you can see all those temperature set points are in there now, my sleep, home, and away. And uh, I can click on the different days and see what we've got. So I added all that stuff into that Saturday. And you can see all the set points that I've got in there now, sleep, home, away, sleep. So. Uh, we're gonna go back and then we're just gonna go down to the next one here, vacation. And it says, I have not created any current or future vacation events, but what you can do in here is click this plus symbol and then you can create a vacation. What it's gonna do is put your HVAC system in a mode to help you save energy. So say I depart today and then I'm gonna return, I don't know, we'll just put a date way out in the future, the 20th and 4 p.m., sure that works for me and then vacation settings, your system will run heat on to 50, 51 degrees, that's fine, or uh, cooling, we'll just make sure that that's off. We don't need any cooling. Um, and then you could change this so that uh, you would have some fan run time per hour. That's probably a good idea to keep uh, stale air from building up in your house, just at least circulate a little bit of air. So you could put that on to like, like mm, let's just say five minutes per hour, and it'll move some air around in your house. And you could adjust this here uh, as well, whatever you want. They recommend 58 degrees. Well, we'll just leave it at 54 is fine for us. Um, and then if you wanted cool on, you would click that over and then you could adjust your cooling temperature. But if you've got it off, then that means your air conditioner is gonna be completely off. So we're gonna go through there and uh, I'm just gonna save. And then now I've got my vacation here. And if I wanted to delete this or cancel it, I could do so. I just click delete up here at the top and delete that. So it would go into vacation mode uh, for whatever I've got scheduled. So if you know you're going out of town, you could set this ahead of time and then you'd have that vacation event in there. Now we've got reminders and alerts down here. It says uh, reminders, zero messages, alerts, zero. Uh, what you will have in here after a certain amount of time is a reminder to change your HVAC air filter. So you can click down here in uh, preferences and you can click on HVAC maintenance. Um, you can get a reminder for that. You can just go in here and uh, enable it and then it's going to give you a frequency. So you could say, uh, I want every six month reminders uh, for HVAC maintenance. If you wanna call an HVAC guy to come look at your equipment. You've got one for your furnace filter in here. So I could click uh, enable and I could do every three months, get an enabled uh, reminder to make sure I've got nice clean air. And uh, you can go in here and we should probably adjust the date here. So. We're all the way out in July and definitely not 2014. So we'll just say that uh, it was changed on July 6th and there we go at our last filter change. So now it's gonna remind me in three months to change my filter. 
go back and then you've got other stuff here. If you have a system with a UV lamp, you could create a preference for that. You can get a low temperature alert. I do like that. So I will get an alert on my phone if it gets too low. You can get a high temperature alert um, if you want that as well. I think this is really good for pets. So I would turn this way down if you've got a pet, maybe say like 80, 83 degrees is too hot for a pet or something like that. And then you'd get an alert if uh, for whatever reason your house was too hot. Um, then you've got low humidity alert. Um, if it was too low, you could get alert. Too high humidity alert, you could get an alert. It will display the alerts on the thermostat uh, as well as give you an alert on the phone through the app. And then it says enable heating and cooling alerts. So we'll leave those all enabled. And here we are just back to the home screen. Go back again and then now we've got settings. So if I click on here, uh, you've got your device microphone setting in here. You can turn that on or off. If you want to mute that ALEXA service, you can do so by turning off the microphone right there. And then you've got your speaker volume here. So there's a built-in speaker here. So I'm just going to leave it on medium, but you could certainly turn that up or down if you wanted. Uh, your date and time, it's got your time here. So we should definitely uh, make sure that is currently set. It says current date, July 13th, 2022. Okay, that's great. Everything is set correctly. Uh, you've got your preferences down here, uh, temperature display. We do want it in Fahrenheit, your heating range, your cooling range that you can set things to, your device name. And why this is important is because you are going to use your device name if you want to use the voice commands through ALEXA or Siri to control it. Uh, you would have to say ALEXA set my Ecobee to 72 degrees. So you might wanna change that to living room or upstairs or downstairs or downstairs thermostat or, or upstairs thermostat or some kind of a name that you are gonna use and remember. The next thing down here, we've got our ALEXA sounds disabled. So it's not gonna beep at you after a command. Uh, I don't really want that on there. You've got your screen brightness. You could change that right there. So if it's uh, too dark for you, you can turn this way up or you can turn it off and then you've got your active screen. So you've got your standby screen when you're not using it. Um, maybe you're having trouble seeing that. You could turn that up a little bit higher and then you're gonna be able to see it better. So we'll, we'll actually set this up a little bit. I do think uh, if you've got a lot of light on it, it's probably better to turn the brightness up a little bit so you can see it better. Active to standby screen, that's just the amount of time it takes to go from that brighter potentially setting, active setting to standby. Uh, you've got your hold action. So what it's gonna do is hold the temperature until the next activity, but you could change that um, so that it would hold only for like two hours, four hours, or until you change it. So if you just wanna always manually use your thermostat, you could click until you change it. And that means whatever set point you use, um, it's going to stay at that. So you could just use this as a manual thermostat and set it to 73 degrees and it's not gonna change via the schedule, it's not gonna change via the Eco Plus or any of that smart stuff. If you click here and you put your Ecobee smart thermostat until you change it, that's basically gonna make the Ecobee smart thermostat premium uh, a manual thermostat. And then it says decide at time of change, but I'm just gonna leave it at until next scheduled activity. But if you don't want any of the smart features, you can just click until you change it. And then it's gonna work pretty much like a traditional thermostat. It's just gonna have this fancy touchscreen display. Now we've got here our heating smart recovery. And what this does is if your desired temperature is scheduled to change, smart recovery is enabled and your Ecobee will automatically figure out when to start heating your home in order to reach desired temperature at the time you have identified. So that means that it will heat up ahead of 5 p.m. if I want it to be exactly 72 degrees or it'll cool down um, either if you've got heat on or cooling on to 72 degrees at exactly 5 p.m. when I get home from work. Um, so if you have that enabled and let's say your away temperature was higher or lower, what it's gonna do is preheat or pre-cool so that it's exactly that specific temperature based on using an algorithm of data collected in your home to get it exactly that temperature at a particular time. So we're gonna leave that enabled. Uh, the heat heating smart recovery and the cooling smart recovery is the same thing just for cooling. So we're gonna click back on that. And when I click back here, 
Sometimes it takes you back to the screen and if you wanna get back to those preferences, you just click here and that's gonna give you all those different preferences, but it usually takes you back to this main setting screen. Here you've got your Wi-Fi network and then uh, you've got HomeKit, uh, it's not paired in your Amazon ALEXA settings, so that's not currently paired. Your installation settings, uh, you will do this when you set that up, so you don't really wanna mess around with that. And then access control. Let's say uh, you had this in an Airbnb or something like that, uh, and you wanted to enable a security code so people can't turn it too low and your pipes freeze. You could enter an access code in here, and then that doesn't allow other people to change the temperature outside of a particular range. So you could set a temperature between, let's say, 65 and 75 and then people wouldn't be able to change that temperature beyond that range so that you know that your pipes will never freeze. Um, then you've got just reset down there. So we're gonna click back and that is pretty much everything that you can do inside this thermostat. Now we're gonna go over to the phone and show you how to use it on your phone. And uh, the only thing left here is my Ecobee Pro and about, and about is just like your serial number and stuff like that. And the Ecobee Pro is if you had someone install this and you wanted to capture their information and telephone number, uh, you can do that in there. So let's go over to the phone and show you how to use your Ecobee Smart Thermostat Premium from the phone. Here we are on the Ecobee app. And everything we showed you how to do on the device itself, you can do on the app. However, there are a few additional features on the app that aren't available on the thermostat device itself. So we'll show you those in this quick overview. Now you can click right here and change the temperature just like you did uh, with the device itself. You can click up or down or scroll through these. So we'll X out of that. What's nice about the app is that you can control this from within your home and or you can control it from outside your home. So you could be sitting on your couch and not wanna get up, or you could be a thousand miles away and just wanna make sure that your temperature in your home doesn't get too cold for a winter storm or it doesn't get too hot in the summertime. And that's the great thing about smart thermostats, you can control them from anywhere. I'd say I use the app probably 95% of the time versus actually changing the temperature on the device. Now what you've got down here is your weather just like we showed you on the device. And then here, if you wanna change from heating to cooling, you can do so. So you've got heat, cool, auto, and off. So we'll cancel that. And then just like we showed you before, this is the current temperature inside the house. And this is the temperature set point for my air conditioning that will turn on and hold the temperature at 81 degrees. And I could change that. Up here, you've got your humidity, so it's 48%. And then if we click on this, we've got our current air quality. You can see our VOCs are low and our CO2 is moderate. Let's click back and then we've got over here our quick change settings. So you can go to that home, away or sleep set point and change your fan. Now we'll click back again and we'll show you some of the settings that aren't available on the thermostat itself, but are available on the app. So everything below this, we've pretty much showed you already on the device itself. However, the Eco Plus has some more menu options and features in here, as well as some more explanations. So we've currently got this enabled over here, and you can see our savings. We can switch this from anywhere to the very minimum, all the way up to the maximum, and it will allow us to save more energy by balancing the temperatures when we are away to save the most money if we've got it turned up to max. And if we've got it turned them in, it's going to balance comfort more. So choose what is right for you. But if you wanna save the most money, put it over to max. Now, if we click in here on Smart Home in a way, it explains what Smart Home in a way is. It says Smart Home in a way uses your Ecobeat sensors to determine if your home or away to minimize wasted energy. This helps Eco Plus readjust. So even when your day doesn't match your schedule, you won't feel a difference. Up here, it also says we can change our autopilot settings. So we'll go to those here a little bit later. Down below, we've got our schedule assistant and it says set up autopilot for a more accurate schedule. Here, we've got our schedule assistant on. 
and the schedule assistant learns our behavior using the Ecobee's built-in occupancy sensor to build a better schedule for us. So it will automatically adjust and create a schedule for us after a week or so of use, and it will constantly tweak it based on our routine. So I've got the schedule assistant on, but you could turn that off. Now we click down here, and it says adjust temperature for humidity. The humidity can affect the feels like temperature. Lower the humidity feels cooler and vice versa. Eco Plus adjusts your set points based on the humidity to more accurately optimize for savings. So what this does is it takes into account that humidity and it can adjust the temperature set point up or down a few degrees because if it's very humid in your house, 72 degrees may feel much hotter and what it will do is adjust that humidity to feel a little bit more comfortable. So we'll go over here and click again and then we've got time of use on and what this is is if you have a time of use rate, not everybody has this, a lot of people have just a constant electricity rate but this will help you save energy. So there's some areas in the country that during different times of the day when there's higher demand usage for electricity, they charge you a higher rate. So if you have this, what it will do is help you save energy by using less energy and lower your heating and cooling set points a little bit to try and save you energy when energy is most expensive and then preheat or pre-cool your home when energy is a little bit less expensive. So you can click here and set up your rate provider. Uh, I don't have a time of use rate. It's just a flat rate for our electricity at all times of the day. But if you have this, it is a really great feature to help you save some energy where you can preheat and pre-cool your home so that you aren't paying for that really expensive energy. Now the last one down here is this community energy savings. It says high energy demand from your community can exceed supply and lead to outages. Eco Plus works with your utility provider to prevent them. If I slide this over, it will allow the utility to send some signals uh, that work with the Eco Plus setting to help you save energy and help the grid save energy uh, during high demand time when there's not enough electricity for the grid. Now, an important thing to note is that a lot of utility providers will pay you a stipend to participate in a program like this. So you should check on that uh, to see if you get any savings or a discount on your utility bill for enrolling in this program. And a lot of times there's an online portal that you need to complete uh, to enroll this type of program to get that rebate. So just check that out if you plan on doing that. So let's go to uh, our smart home in a way and then click just up in this go to autopilot settings. And the autopilot uses a combination of your phone location, Wi-Fi connection, and Ecobee sensors to intelligently determine if you are home or away. So if you click this, what it will do is then use your phone's location to more accurately determine if you are home and or if you are away. And then that will help calculate that Eco Plus savings. And if it sees that you're like 30 miles away, then it's gonna know that you are away, obviously, but also that you're not heading home for a while. So it's got some time before it needs to turn up that heating or cooling. So we would click allow while using the app. And then you can go in here and it says, uh, you can prove your accuracy uh, by setting up your home Wi-Fi here and then your geofence. Uh, so it'll show your address there. And then basically when you move outside of that geofence location, um, you're gonna be able to save a little bit more energy if it lets you use this autopilot setting. So we'll click out of that and click again. And that's pretty much the difference in terms of settings that are available on the app that are not available on the device itself. I will say it's much easier to set up a schedule uh, on the app in my opinion than it is on the device itself. So I recommend using the app uh, for setting up schedules and changing them. And you can go in here and change any of these days or add um, any of these different set points. Uh, just click here, you could click save, and then that's gonna pop up on your uh, schedule. So let's click away and we'll just change this time to 11 a.m., click save, and that should pop up right there. So we've got sleep, home, away, and sleep. 
and then I could copy this schedule to another day if I wanted, or I could click on any one of these and change the time uh, for my away time, or I could click on my home and change the away time there. So it is much easier to adjust the temperature and schedule here, I think, on the app than it is on the device itself. So that is all that we've got for showing you how to use your Ecobee Smart Thermostat Premium or your Ecobee Smart Thermostat Premium Manual. If you like this video, please give us that thumbs up, subscribe, or click any of the links below if you want to support us, as well as check out the description for other videos we have on the Ecobee Smart Thermostat Premium. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.